Now, if you've ever thrown an image into a website and then you've resized things, maybe you've even done work to make sure everything else is working, but uh, you might have realized when the browser window gets smaller, the text and other content will adapt automatically to the browser without doing anything, but images won't. Images shoot out the side and it's kind of annoying because they cause horizontal overflow on our pages. And it's just the way images work because by default images will be the size of the image you're putting there. You have a small image, it will be small. You have a really big image, it's going to be really, really big. So what we want to do to be able to fix this is we're going to come over to our styles here. I'm going to come up a little bit uh, just so I'm sort of where my general element selectors are. And I'm going to do it right here. And this is going to be one of the most common lines that you write in your CSS. Uh, basically every file as part of the general reset at the beginning, people will include this along with the box sizing and border box. And on here, what we're going to do is we're going to say max inline size of 100%. And a max inline size, this means along the inline axis, we can't get bigger than 100%. 100% of what? It's 100% of the parent. So whatever the image is inside of. And by doing that, if I refresh this, you can see my image is actually now shrinking down as this gets smaller and is growing as it gets bigger. And so it keeps or prevents the image from overflowing. If I come down and I go look at my other page here, the same thing will be happening with my image down at the bottom because we're using a general image selector. So all my images are getting this applied to them. So that solves that problem. What you do not want to do is set an inline size or a width. You don't want to do that because what that's going to cause is as things get bigger, sometimes the image will actually start getting larger than what its original size was. And when that happens, the quality of the image is gonna start going down because we're getting bigger than the original size. Images are made up of pixels, so basically those pixels start getting filled in by the computer and it, it's not very good at it. So we wanna use a max width, or as I said, I prefer using the inline size as the logical property there and that's going to prevent any responsive issues and problems. But there is one more piece to this puzzle that you'll normally see, which is also coming on here and actually changing the display type to block. Not black, but block. <laughs> and that's because images are inline elements. And just to highlight that, let's come and we'll go, we're on our second page here. So, and I'm actually going to put it around here where I have the getting started that's right there. So to do that, we're gonna come right here and I'm gonna put in my IMG, SRC is equal to, ALT is equal to, and I'm gonna close that image. And then here, I'm gonna to go to my images folder and I wanna use my simple steps image because it's not too big. And there we go, we get the image coming in. And to show what this is doing, I'm just gonna come back and we're gonna get rid of the display block that I put on there. Because if you remember when we have display block, it always forces a new line. So unlike many sports, new line, image, new line, getting started, which we don't want, uh, just to highlight this. And so you can see that I have an image that's inside of my text and it works. You can put images in there. In the old days of the web, you might have wanted to do this. These days, it wouldn't be very common. But one thing you'll notice, and I'm gonna zoom in a lot here to highlight what's happening, is the text is actually sitting on what we call the baseline. And the baseline is this, like the under, if you were to take like an underline, like we have here for uh, on our link, and draw it along there, it's where all the letters are sitting. But some letters go below the baseline. Our P here is going below the baseline, or our G here is going below the baseline. And there's actually this space underneath the image that's reserved to make sure that it sits on the baseline properly. And you can see that like the G goes underneath where my image is sitting. If we wanted to have images in our text, this is probably a better behavior. But as I said, it's very rare that you'd actually want to do something like that. So it's much more common to, well, first of all, let's, let's come here and take that out because it's a silly thing to have. Uh, so I'm gonna remove that. And then let's, we can shrink this back down. Uh, and if we come and take a look actually down here, we have this image at the bottom and this is gonna highlight why we add the display block with the way we use images in modern design is on this page, we have this section here. So section here going all the way down to my section there with this image all the way at the bottom. And let's come on this section, and I'm gonna add the class that we have of teal BG, which just gives us a background color that's teal on there. Uh, and you'll notice the space on the bottom here actually looks a little bit bigger than the space on the left and the right. It's not a lot, but it is a little bit. And the reason for that is because on our teal BG, if we go and find it, we have some padding on there. So we have 20 pixels of padding on the left and the right. It looks bigger than that because I'm zoomed in right now but we have that 20 pixels and here we have the 20 pixels plus the empty space underneath the image. And to really highlight this, let's make our padding zero. 
and then refresh. So the image is touching here, it's touching here, but it's not touching on the bottom. And this is infuriating that you get these little spaces that come up like that. And you could even like people will try like image margin zero to try and reduce the space, but it's not a margin that's there. It's literally the empty space underneath the image because it thinks you might want to use it within some text. So it's really a holdover from the old days of the web. And because of that, <laughs> and to prevent that from happening, the common way to do that is your max inline size of 100% and then to also come in here with the display of block. And because it's not an inline element that needs to live on a baseline, it's now a block element. When I refresh here, you can see it actually lines up perfectly with the bottom now, and it doesn't add unnecessary space. So whenever you're doing your images, we make them responsive with this line, and we just make them more useful for everyday use in how images are used in modern web development with the display block there. And again, with your box sizing border box, this is something you probably want to include on every single CSS style sheet that you create.